This video continues the series of the exploration of the universe and how we establish the distances to astronomical objects. The first thing that we're going to talk about is intensity and what it is and how it connects to all of this. So let's imagine, as in this picture, we have a light bulb and the light bulb is obviously emitting light. The energy that a wave transfers over a particular area is called the intensity of the wave. So for example, if you wanted more intense light, you might move from a position on the outer circle here inwards so that you're closer to the light bulb and you get more energy being delivered to you. We know that light is a wave and as a progressive wave travels, its light becomes more spread out. Its energy becomes less concentrated if you like. So let's imagine that we have a meter squared of area on this inner circle. This is very close to the light source, so that's going to get a large amount of energy per meter squared. As you move out towards the outer circle, the same meter squared is going to receive less energy because the light spreads out from the source, and the sphere of light gets bigger and bigger the further you are from the source. Now obviously, the amount of intensity, the amount of energy that you get on this meter squared depends on how bright the original source is. So it depends on the power of the source. And we usually talk about power rather than just energy being emitted because we want that idea of per second built in. So our intensity then depends on the power. More power will mean greater intensity at any point along the radius of the sphere that we're traveling on. And it's over the surface area of a sphere. We should be able to see that, of course, this means that intensity will have a unit of watts per meter squared, or joules per second per meter squared. And this is another inverse square law. As you double your distance, your intensity is going to fall to a quarter of the original amount. When we talk about astrophysics, we don't usually use the idea of power. We replace it with luminosity. Luminosity is exactly the same as power. It is simply the energy that is transmitted per second. How does this relate to our search for distance measurements, ways of finding out how far away something is? Well, we've got distance in this equation. Intensity is something that you can measure. So you can figure out how much energy is falling on your telescope per second on the area of your scope. So that's very measurable, that's no problem. The only thing then we need to figure out is what the luminosity of the object that is emitting this light might be. And if we can find that, measure the intensity, we can use this equation to find the distance to the object. Which brings me to a review of a previous video that I will put a link to here. For home A-level, that is in thermodynamics, and for IAL, it's in this space topic. And in that video, I looked at Stefan's law and Wien's law. So let's review what Stefan's law says. That tells us that the luminosity of any black body, which we can consider stars to be, is proportional to the surface area of the body and the fourth power of its temperature. Wien's law says that the temperature is a constant number, and this is given in the data book, over the lambda max. And please do go back and look at that video so you know what lambda max means. But this means that if you can measure the wavelength, the primary wavelength of the light coming from an astronomical object, you can very simply calculate its temperature. And of course, once you have temperature, you can put it into that equation there. The only thing that's missing is the surface area of the star. Now, based upon the color of the light coming from the star, we can classify stars into various different sizes, and I'll do more about that later on and also in a future video. But you can have a good approximation based upon the light coming, what the surface area of that star is, and therefore, bingo, you can find the luminosity and put that luminosity into our intensity equation. It is, however, an approximation. So remember, you are approximating the size of the star by using a classification system. So you're always going to have an approximation for the luminosity and therefore an approximation for the distance. And while astronomers are very used to approximations, because the distances that we're dealing with here are very large, and there's always going to be a quite a large uncertainty in any of these measurements, 
We do have some more tools. What if you could know what the luminosity of an astronomical object was without having to go through this process? And what astronomers have discovered over the years, after lots and lots of research, and I'll get into that in a moment, is that there are such things as standard candles. Now, a standard candle, and you need to know this definition, is an object of known luminosity. No matter where it occurs in the universe, if you see one of these, you know what its luminosity is, and that's very powerful. The first of those is something that is called a Cepheid variable. Now, you don't need to know the details of these standard candles. You just need to know what a standard candle is and how they're used. But it is helpful because you'll see references to Cepheid variables, so it's nice if you know what they are. So a Cepheid variable, as the name suggests, is a star whose luminosity varies with a particular time period. And what Henrietta Leavitt discovered was that the luminosity is proportional to that time period. So if you measure the time period, then you can figure out what the luminosity is. These have been incredibly useful in the study of the universe because Edwin Hubble used these, for example, to come up with Hubble's law, again in a future video. You can use these up to 30 million parsec, or 30, what are called, megaparsec. The second of our standard candles is what's called a Type 1a supernova. And again, you don't need to know the details of what Type 1a means. You simply need to know that when this particular star goes supernova, its luminosity is always the same. These are extremely powerful because these can be seen up to 10,000 megaparsec away because they're very, very bright. So they're easy to detect. And so we can now use those to measure much larger distances. The only disadvantage with the Type 1a supernova is that it's a supernova. And so only happens for a short period of time. So you have to spot it. Now, what do we do with these standard candles? Their known luminosity. Well, we put them into our equation. That means that d is going to be the square root of l over 4 pi i. Again, i you measure just simply at the surface of your telescope. l we now know, which means you can find the distance very easily. These have been used to find the distance to galaxies, because you can spot a type 1a supernova in a very distant galaxy up to 10,000 megaparsec away. You can spot Cepheid variables in closer galaxies, but nonetheless, it gives us an idea of the size of the universe. What we can then do is do approximate distances of other stars in that galaxy. So once we know how far away the galaxy is, we can do an approximation of the distance of other stars. If we know their distance and we can measure their intensity, we can find their luminosities and you can start to build up a picture, a catalog of stars and their luminosities based upon their color, their size, and that is what I meant earlier on when I referenced this. So much work has been done in the past with this that we have a lot of tools now where we can look at a star and approximate its size and therefore use this equation. This is an extremely powerful equation and you need to be able to use it. We're still only at 10 megaparsec though. What we'd like to be able to do is use all the research that has been done in the past and build up a calibration curve for luminosities and stars. And that's what I'll cover in my next video.